Good, good afternoon, everyone. Do you still have power for some Angular, finally? Mm. Ah, after lunch. Mm. Angular. Ah. How, ma how many of you are using Angular? All right. How many of you thinking of uh, migrating to Angular 2? <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's do another one. How many of you already started the migration? Just one. And all right. <laughs> a little bit about myself, all right? My name is Zenir, I'm coming um, from Israel. I'm the head of uh, the AngularJS development in a company called the 500 Tech, uh, which you can learn more about if you're visiting our website or ask me later, you're welcome. Um, I'm also doing Angular for the last few years. I've been involved in tens of projects of Angular, so I've seen it all. I see all the evil of Angular, all the bad things, and all the good things. I'm also running the Angular uh, Angular JSIL uh, meetup in Israel. Great community, three three thousand developers, like a lot of uh, great community that I met here first time in Rome. Thank you. And I'm also, if you like to know, play the electric bus. One uh, little uh, disclaimer: uh, this photograph has been photoshopped heavily. So, <laughs> if if you wonder who is this person. And why I'm fat. <laughs> All right. So, are you ready for the migration? Because, as as we seen, uh, most of you will be migrating to Angular 2. Not like this guy who <laughs> lives in a dream and thinks, "Oh, I can still work on Angular 1." Yeah, it will be support. I don't think so. All right. Let's start. My an agenda is like this. An agenda. Yeah, it's not a. Not a typo. Uh, the easiest way for me to talk about migration is start to you know drop a lot of technology on, on your heads. Like I don't want to talk about I skipped at all. All right. I don't want to talk about uh, Angular 2 upgrade model. It had an upgrade model built in in the core, and you can do like hybrid Angular 2, Angular 1, this kind of stuff. I, I don't like it. I'm not going to talk about a library called ng forward. And I'm not talking about data flow, Redux, NGRX, all the stuff. And I'm certainly not going to talk about Angular uh, 1.5 components. So if anyone here feels like he, he wants to go away, yeah, you've got a chance. Uh, sorry. All right? I'm going to be very, very practical today. All right? Let's, let's be realistic. Um, we need to get ready for the migration. But personally, I don't believe of uh, like doing it, like uh, try to um, force Angular 1 applications to behave like Angular 2. That's not the way. I read a lot of posts of, you know, uh, let's, take, let's do something, some hybrid stuff. Let's take uh, Angular 2 components, drop them inside Angular 1 application, let them work together. Personally, I don't think it's, it's the right thing to do. Uh, what can we do? Uh, we certainly can get some uh, good ideas from Angular 2 and apply them to our current application, which will make it better, all right? And then we can be ready for the future, the present. Angular, Angular 2 is already in uh, beta 10, and it, it will probably be released in a month or two. That's the, that's the idea. So we've got a win-win situation and a nice effect that I found on my Mac which is this. <laughs> I will talk about uh, using modules, uh, using classes, uh, decoupling from the framework API, and components as UI building blocks. Right? And we will see a lot of code, so don't worry. I don't like just moving out slides and stuff. So it will be code, but to wait a second, uh, all the things that I just told you about is not Angular 2. And you're right. It's you know that's the truth. It's just just good practices. But if we apply those uh, good practices, I promise you that that uh, we will be ready for Angular 2, like this creepy guy. All right. <laughs> anyway, I've got a lot of code on my slides, and um, yeah, you can you can you can get the code if you like right now, or you can sit down and listen and watch the slides. Um, anyway, it will be uh, it 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 it's now available on GitHub. So, if you like to do it now or later, you're welcome. I built a little uh, demo app, 
All right? Let's take a look. Nothing fancy, but a lot of uh, Angular stuff. A kind of to-do list. Everything, yeah, everyone's seen that. I can put my name, it's like a, like a silly coffee shop, uh, very bad application. I can uh, put another name here, blah, blah, blah. All right, we've seen it before. Nothing fancy, as I promise. But I've got filters, and I've got controllers, and I've got two routes. So I've got the home screen and the history screen, and I've got some inputs. So there is a little bit of code that we can talk about. OK? Let's start our journey. Silence. All right. Uh, how many of you using uh, module loaders? The truth. In code motion, restrict the truth. No one will ever know who's put his hands up. Just the cameraman and all the world watching it later. All right. So if you are not using module loaders, so probably your index.html looks like this, which is a bad thing. And I don't think we need to talk about it. All right. We've got a lot of issues here. We can scale it. Uh, the order of loading the script is problematic and blah, 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 blah. I'm personally using Webpack for the last uh, almost, I mean, I um, think one year and a half, which is a great tool. And these 10 lines of code is the most basic Webpack configuration that lets you use ES6 modules. That's all you need. That's the truth. When you're going to production, of course, this file is going to be bigger, a lot of other configurations, but this is the basics. So the first thing that I advise you to do and it's uh, something that is realistic, and you can do it today without many efforts, it's integrate a module loader to your, to your build process. You can use Webpack. You can use Webpack uh, with uh, Gulp or Grant or anything else, but start to uh, go, go, go away from this thing, all right, and move to managing your dependencies inside the code. It's not hard, believe me. And each one of you uh, that we like to get a starter project or some reference to how to start and how to do it, I've got a lot of stuff in my GitHub. And I welcome you to join me after, after us to the heck, heck, uh, heck, Hackathon Garden, how you call it? This place with uh, free food and sofas. Yeah. All right, over there. So module loaders. Module bundlers are not like concatting your code. So just, just to make sure. How many of you ever used Gulp concat? Yeah, there is some. Concat your code, it's, it's the same like, like this index HTML. And then we've got the same issues. All right, so everyone is, everyone's agree. Uh, look at this code, straight from our demo app. Uh, I wrapped it with uh, an uh, ify. Is anyone here doesn't know what is uh, ify? Huh? Just, a s uh, just a function? All right, let's try to use this laser bin. Just a function who calls itself and create, um, right, yeah, create a context inside. Nothing fancy. So if we moved to a module loader, we can use native JavaScript modules. And we've got this syntax instead. And please take a look that uh, intentionally, I, d I haven't used any other ES6 yes, 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 uh, uh, code inside just the export keyword, all right, intentionally. Just to prove you that if you are afraid of doing this, this migration to, to ES6, you, ca you can do it step by step. You can start by just integrating models. Any questions about module loader? I'm really happy to answer one question. No? Everyone's agree? Great. Or asleep? One of the two. <laughs> Uh, all right, uh, next step is to take a modular approach. Now, a modular approach, again, it's not like uh, take all of your application and start refactoring it. Just let, let things in, think in modules. Um, I've seen a lot of AngularJS projects, and I've seen a lot of code, um, a lot of uh, developers was, for some reason, afraid to separate the actual code from the registration to the dependency injection which is not such a big deal. 
but it gives you a good separation and a cleaner code, and each one of those files is, is got only one responsibility, which is a good thing, and each time that I want to add another service to my code, I just need to register here on another file. I don't need to touch any index. I'm not mixing the framework dependency injection API inside my code, all right? I haven't told you before, but on this GitHub project, you've got branches, and each branch is, is uh, demonstrating uh, exactly the same, the same thing that you see on the screen. So if you play with the project, you can go step by step, and mig it's not actually migrating. And applying this stuff, you see the code changing step after step. All right, so another thing that I, that I noticed that um, we've got some issues of taking the config, um, config functionality of Angular outside of the index.js. I mean, how many of you know that you can call the .config as many times as you want? All of you? Great, so do it. So wha why are we building an index.js with routing and, and configuring our providers and everything? Why not just you know, take it outside, call the routes, because I'm just configuring the routes. I can take it to a separate file, which is a good thing. Questions? All right, so let's move forward. Uh, in Angular 2, everything is a class. Uh, in React.js, which I think that all of you heard about, right, kind of, uh, we are encouraged to use the functions, pure functions, more functional programming style. In Angular 2, uh, we are encouraged to use classes. So everything is a class. Everything that used to be a function in Angular 1, a factory function, filter or other stuff that we're going to see in a minute, now we're using classes. So the next realistic step that you can apply to your project today is adapt the class syntax. So Bubble is already in your project. If you followed, uh, if you followed my slides, when I uh, integrate Webpack inside, it was just one line of use Bubble loader and that's it, and I've already got Bubble because I need to support the module syntax. So the next step is not refactoring, refactoring all of my code and start using all of ES6 features, but services are important. And if you write your services like this, it's not uh, going to be very hard to write it like this. Everyone's agree, huh? No one shouts at me, no, I'm not agree. Objection, go away, all right. So take the code and write classes. Let's talk about filters, because filters in Angular 1 require the function. If I want to, to uh, write a filter, and please ignore this one, it's just for, for shorter syntax, but this is error function from ES6, but it can be just a regular function. So each one of you who ever wrote a filter in Angular 1 knows that a filter, it's a function that returns a function. And when we write uh, the filter, when we register it to the dependency injection, we use a string, of course, and we pass a function. So if I want to be consist and use the class syntax, filters um, are just uh, functions, static functions, stateless functions. <laughs> so I can adapt this syntax and just create a class with a static function, right? I call it transform not, 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 not because I, I made it up, because this is the way you write uh, Angular 2 filters, a class with a function called transform. And if we got time, and I really hope that we'll get, that I'll get the time, I will do some live coding at the end of the session, and I'll, I'll be writing, uh, I will converting this code to Angular 2, but if we got the time. So if I need to register a function, and I want to be consist, and I want to refactor all of my code to classes without doing some, without breaking a lot of stuff, that's the way. Just create a static static function. Static just because I don't want to, you know, to create an instance. And register it as usual, passing the static function instead. Objections? All right. <laughs> View controllers. View controllers are easy because basically they, they are just like services. They are plain classes already. 
just constructors. So I don't need to talk a lot about, about it, just convert it to a class. And please, please notice that I, uh, again, intentionally, I haven't uh, uh, moved away the scope and I wrote everything inside the constructor. Again, because the context of this talk is let's be realistic. If you got a, an Angular 1 project up and running, I don't want you to break it to pieces. So keep it as is, but move to classes. Any questions? Great, great audience. <laughs> no questions at all. All right. Drop the scope. Yeah. We all like the scope. Let's uh, write more JavaScript and less framework code. And when I mean framework code, I mean the scope. The scope is a concept that is completely gone in Angular 2. And I think it's the first thing that we need to attack when we are preparing our code to immigration to get rid of this, this thing. So, um, oh, I didn't mention, but you've got the, the name of the branches. I put it over here, right? So you can follow along. So the class syntax is straightforward. Or this is the, the code from, from the previous slide. And this is the registration of the controller in the router. This is the refactoring, it just remove the scope and bind everything to, to the instance. Is anyone looking at this code and doesn't understand what's going on? It's important for me to understand so I can. All right. And using the controller as, which is, I think, uh, nowadays in Angular is a very basic thing and all of us know about it. But what about uh, the watchers? What happens if I want to watch something? I want to do something like this scope watch. So I have to inject the scope because the dollar watch is a method of the scope. And if I have to inject the scope, so my previous advice is not <coughs> worth. Um, something interesting, if you've got a simple watch, and by a simple watch I mean you just want to, to know when a new order is assigned. A new, uh, sorry, this selected order was changed to another order, all right? You can use native getters and setters in JavaScript. Native getters and setters is this syntax, set selected order. So what you're watching like now, it just now is watching, watching, it's not really watching, uh, um, a simple property like the selected or order, okay, uh, with a setter, which is um, good for better performance and we don't need the scope. Now, this is a very simple case, I know, because there is a lot of times when we are uh, writing watches and we've got some more complicated scenarios, but there is a lot of, uh, a lot of scenarios when we can replace uh, the scope with a setter and we're done. Any questions? So we don't need any, we don't have any performance issue as well because we are not writing a uh, watcher. Angular will do a set, we, we put our change handler inside the setter and that's it. Okay. What about deep watching? What if we want to, uh, you've got a question? I'll be happy to answer. I felt a question in the air. <laughs> <laughs> what about deep watching? What about if, if I got an array and I want to, to watch his, his elements? Uh, if I use the setter, it won't work because the array itself doesn't, doesn't change. So I need, again, to inject the dollar scope and use the watch and worse, to use the true flag and then bad things happen, all right? So uh, I want to take a moment and, and explain why I wrote Think Immutable. Uh, for those of you who doesn't know the concept behind immutable uh, data, immutable is data that you can't change. So if you want to change something, the result is a new object. And the reason I, I wrote Think Immutable, uh, it's because that I think Immutable is a great thing. You've got great libraries that you can use uh, Immutable Data Structures, structures excuse me, e easily. But in the context of, you know, don't take every each new technology and put it inside your project, we can think in a way that Immutable uh, Data Structure works and get rid of the scope. <coughs> and use setters as well. 
And in these examples, you can see that I initialize these orders by calling a method on these orders get orders. So I've got a new object. But when I create an order, I just change it on the, on the model, on the service. So the array itself doesn't change, just a new element inside. So if I put a setter, it won't work. But if I just refactoring and making sure that very, very naive solution but, but works, each time I'm creating an order, which means that I'm going to change the array, I'm implicitly calling the this orders get orders again to get a new pointer for the array. So my setter will work now. So I know. I had to write uh, two or three more lines of code to make this work. But the good news is that I don't need a scope. And for this scenario, it works. Any questions? Cool. Let's talk about events. All of you know about Dotoscope events, which is a good excuse to inject the scope. Now the scope got a, uh, the event is a kind of event emitter implementation, so we can emit and broadcast events on the scope hierarchy tree, right? Which is a good thing, but we don't want to scope. So my solution is just don't use it. Write a very very simple class that I think that each one of you know how to do it and can invest uh, you know five minutes to write such a class that can emit events just in sake of take this scope out of the system. In Angular 2, uh, there is a class called event emitter that you, ca you can use it it's straight from the core. But if we're on Angular 1 application and we want to do the minimum refactoring for getting to Angular 2, I found that this is the best solution. If you want to use events, just implement this simple class. You can, you, can, you can make a very complicated logic here if you need, but on its base, it's just a class that can emit events and listen to events. And it doesn't couple to the scope tree, so you can use it wherever you like. In, in the project example, I haven't used it in, in, a, in a controller uh, context. I've got a service called storage, and this storage emit an event, and another service is registered to this event. So the API is the same, just 10 lines of code, and again, we don't need to use the scope. And now we get rid of the Dora scope completely. Any questions? Cool. So let's talk about components, which is a great buzzword those days. Now, components are, are a, it's a complicated thing. It's, it's a new pattern. It's like uh, change uh, the way we think about UI. While we're moving uh, from the MVC or MVC uh, style patterns to a component composition tree pattern, it's, it's a big thing. It's not, it's not something that we can, we can just take our Angular app and a you know, few days of work and change all of our API to a component tree. And the truth is that if you build your Angular 1 uh, with directives and um, try to implement a tree structure, uh, you won't get anything because the implementation of the digest cycle and all the change detection implementation of Angular 1 doesn't know how to optimize this tree. So we can get an, an Angular 1 application that looks like a tree of components, but it doesn't matter, it doesn't really matter. It's not just a, a, a synthetic sugar to use components in Angular 2. It's actually a new way to uh, uh, watch, um, watch for uh, data changes. It's a new way for a new pattern, all right? So what I want, um, what I advise you to do in the context of Angular 1 is make it synthetic. I mean, think about the directive as components. That's all right. That's a good thing. But for the first step, don't take it too far. Don't uh, start to write directives and uh, pass data through properties and emit events, all of, all of this stuff of Angular 2. 
in an Angular 2 application, it's a good thing because Angular 2 know how to optimize this. But in an Angular 1 application, it's not a good thing because we don't get any any performance out of this. And, and that's, the that's the best case. In the worst case, we are damaging the performance because now we are we try to move data uh, between directives. So if you like to be prepared to Angular 2, but not to get too complicated, I'm advising, first of all, change your project structure if you not already did it. <coughs> Build a flat folder structure with a uh, center around, oh, excuse me. Yeah, center around the concept of features. If you've got the home screen, uh, home, home screen, excuse me, uh, make a directory called home, put everything inside, and I'm keeping the module, I'm keeping everything. It's an Angular 1 application, it's not a new application, but it's a simple thing that you can do, improve the Angular 1 application and get ready for, for a flat uh, directory tree which represent um, UI components in the, for in, in the future, all right? This is the new uh, uh, home module, which is now on a separate directory. So it's taking care of writing its controller. And what I'm doing now is taking directives and just um, breaking my markup for the first stage, breaking the HTML to separate directive without caring too much about, about uh, data flow. So this is how the home module will look like now. He will register all of his directives. And this is how the simple directives is going to look like. Just the template. And if you need the controller, and if you don't need the controller, this is OK. You can write directive like this. I'm not creating, I'm not creating an isolated scope. I'm not passing nothing on the on attributes. I'm not emitting events, nothing. I'm just getting myself prepared with some simple steps that won't hurt your Angular 1 application but we'll make it ready for the future. I've got some more examples, but I think we can move forward. Any questions about it? All right, cool. So some final words, and then I will check in, in if I have some time, I will be happy to show you some code. And if not, you can explore it itself or join me afterward. Uh, modular and clean code is always better. Migration won't be easy anyway, because we need to learn about a lot of new concepts and technologies. You can't really migrate to Angular 2 without knowing about reactive programming, RxJS, TypeScript, um, components, whatever, all right? It won't be easy, of course. But if you take some time, I call it uh, fit it in a sprint, and take this checklist, R do the minimum refactoring you can, <laughs> Uh, implementing the ideas that Angular 2 is introducing us into your Angular 1 application, you won't build a hybrid Angular 1 application then that um, struggling to act and behave like an Angular 2. You just get a better application. Um, do we have time for some live coding? Where are the organizers? A little bit? Five minutes? Ten minutes. Ten minutes is great. Any questions? All right. So, this is where we start off. This is the first slides, which is an Angular application, which by itself, I think it's a, it's a good Angular application. It's clean code. It's well separated. It's written very well, but it's not implementing nothing of the ideas that we talk about. So I've got a folder with all of my templates, which is just two, and I've got a directory with both of my controllers, and I've got a directory of services. And on each file, I'm, I'm writing the service uh, behavior, but I'm registering the service to the dependency injection. Um, I would like to move forward to the last branch and explore the refactor after, after we finished my checklist. 
So my project is look like this. It's still an Angular 1 application. It's got a flat directory tree. But instead of uh, controllers and views, I've got only uh, directives, which means that if you explore the project, you won't see any HTML file. You see fractions of templates, and each directive's got its own responsibility, which is a better way to organize a very complex application. And um, very interesting thing that I've got some some uh, container directives, like this uh, Home.js, which is just a wrapper for the order list and the order editor, so I got good separation in my code. And when I'm writing the route for this uh, application, I can route directly to the directive. So you won't find in this example any view controller, and you won't find any routing to an HTML, and you won't find any HTML, which is a good thing. If you get used to it, you will find your, your project structure is very manageable, your code is cleaner and much more separated, and it's still a, a plain Angular 1 application. Nothing really big change. It's something that from my experience, my real world experience, consulting other companies and helping teams and companies to get ready for the migration and finally actually migrate your code. The big fear about this process is, uh, all right, Angular 2 is a new way to write applications, so I need to stop my development and take a month and learn everything that, that, that I need to learn. And like, I don't know, uh, doing a big refactoring, breaking everything, and I say, no, this, these steps you can do in uh, one week. And to prove you that you are ready, so if, if we're talking about, uh, about syntax, so let's say that this is, the, this is the refactored service that we just wrote in Angular 1. And if I want to refactor it to Angular 2, I will create a TypeScript file. I call it the same, paid filter, paid, excuse me, paid orders. This is the old one. I just copy paste it to ang an Angular 2 filter. I can erase the static. I don't need to return a function because in Angular 2 it's just a class with a function. So I can do like this. And in Angular 2, we've got the concept of pipes, of decorators who's telling the, who's telling the um, and the framework, I don't have Angular 2 imported yet. That's the reason it doesn't recognize it. It's telling the, fra the framework that this class is going to use as a filter, but that's it. I mean, I didn't have to change nothing, nothing, nothing big from the code you see upstairs to the code below. It's actually the same code plus the decorator. All the services after the refactor, if there are plain classes, Let's take one for example. Let's take this one. Let's take the storage service. This is the service in an Angular 1 application. Are you ready? This is a, uh, sorry for the mistake. Injectable, I think I've got a typo. But this is the service in Angular 2. So change the end of file to TS if you like. If you don't like to use TS, you can keep it ES6 and it will behave just the same, all right? Let's look at, uh, at something more, uh, more interesting. Let's take this one. This one used to be a controller and a view template. But now in Angular 2, we don't have views and controllers. We've got only components. So if you adopt this convention, and you did the refactor, and now you've got a directive, so taking this stuff and making it a valid Angular 2 component, I don't need to touch my class at all. I don't need this anymore, because I don't have controller and controller S. 
I do need a template. So I'll take the template as is. I don't need functions and stuff. I can replace it with a decorator we called component. We've got this template. Now, if we are going to use this component, we will need some kind of selector, so we can use it in a template. And that's it. From the perspective of syntax, of course, we've got a lot of other concepts. But from, from, from the perspective of, of syntax, of refactoring our code to be Angular 2, we are already have the way to there, right? Again, you've got everything here. You're welcome to play with the code. You're welcome to catch me out after it. Yes, please. Um, what is the impact to learn? Uh, Prova. So what's the impact to learn TypeScript uh, for, uh, for me, for example? I don't know TypeScript at all. I don't know how to compile it to what's transpile. What, what is your technology background? Are you coming from Java or C Sharp? I'm coming from uh, Java. From Java. So if you are a Java developer, and the syntax will be very familiar. Mm -hmm. And regretting to the, to the compile process, it's uh, with um, our coring tools, like uh, this Webpack <laughs> stuff. Webpack. If you like to compile your your uh, code to type uh, from TypeScript from JavaScript, please take a look of, of on this configuration. You see this uh, loader called Bubble. If I change it, and if you won't believe me, you can <coughs> play with it <laughs> otherwise. If I change it to um, TS loader and ask him to collect all my TS files, npm install TS loader, and you've got your you've got all the infrastructure you need to compile TypeScript. So it's nowadays, it's, it's not a big deal at all. It's just changing one line, installing, a, a, instead of bubble loader, the TS loader. But are they really similar? I mean, TypeScript and JavaScript, so, so that I can Almost. switch very easily uh, uh, from uh, one not, to another? Not very easily, because TypeScript is a superset of, of Jav uh, above mm. JavaScript, okay. right? It's wrapped JavaScript. So we added some synthetic sugar that it's uh, um, that it's uh, removed after the compile. So in TypeScript, if you're writing classes, you have to, to define the class members. And you have to, you want, you don't have to, but you want to, to uh, declare types. So you've got some differences, but the good news is that those days, TypeScript is aligned with, uh, with the ECMAScript um, syntax. So you don't need to get married with the compiler. Because uh, the TypeScript compiler uh, you can configure is compile target. And if you configure your, types, your TypeScript compiler to compile to ES6, so uh, on each step of the way, if you're feeling the TypeScript is not for you, you can compile your code to ES6 and move forward. So it won't hurt your process. Right? Not last question. Uh, Do I really need to learn TypeScript or Angular 2 uh, no. can be written no, in... Absolutely uh, no. Okay. If you learn TypeScript, if you use TypeScript in Angular 2, you will spare some boilerplate code. I mean, you can inject your services, which more easy, because in, if you use TypeScript in Angular 2, you inject the type, and if you don't use TypeScript, so you need to do like an inline uh, decorator and inject it like a w with a string, but, but that's it. You, you absolutely don't have to learn TypeScript. Okay. It's optional. But it's advisable. You will want to, to, to learn TypeScript if you're a Java developer, so. Hi. Hi. What do you think about the new component method introduced in the uh, Angular 1.5? I don't like it. I don't like it Why? at all. <laughs> Why? Why? Beca because uh, because uh, it makes your code synthetically component composed UI, but again, you don't get any effort from this. So, so it's like, it's like uh, following you. I mean, you're not really building components. Components are not just syntax. Components are, are a tree structure. If components are worth nothing. Component tree worth nothing if you don't have uh, uh, an algorithm or a, or a change detection system that supports it. So personally, I don't like it. I don't advise to use it. But that's just me because, I mean, why, why want you to take two steps on the way to migration? Why do you need to uh, take these directives 
and use the new component syntax and then replace it with uh, real components. I, I, I don't think it's, it's right. Take, the, take, the, take your directives, um, take these conventions. It's very easy. It's not if you don't need to learn some new API and you, you've just seen it. I mean, s from, the, uh, from the syntax point of view, it's very easy. Another question? All right, so if you don't have any other questions, you can catch me later, or you can stay in touch. Excuse me. Yes. Another one? Uh, yes, here? please. Yeah. Um, do you still have the capability of put uh, templates in separate H HTML files in, in your structure? What, what the questions? Sorry, I uh, didn't understand. I, I mean, um, you showed uh, how, to s how to put templates. In H inline. Inline, yeah. yeah. Uh, are you still able to put uh, in external files? I, it, that's a good question because I used to do it too in Angular 2, in Angular 1 application. Because Angular 1 applications are more MVC style, so we are building views. We're building uh, large chunks of markup, so it makes sense to manage it in a separate file. But in, uh, in the new uh, component state of mind, if your template is larger, it's a code smell. Maybe you can break it to smaller pieces. Now in Angular 2, you still can use template URL and put it on another file. But most of the time, if you are really into, into component style uh, um, development, you'll find yourself building a very, very, very uh, small building blocks of UI, which perfectly fit as an inline template and match your code much more maintainable because you can see the you know, five lines of, uh, of template and the component class beneath it. So thank you. Welcome. All right, so uh, thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs>